I'm here tonight to announce the appointment of Chief Alfano as, a, of a, as our permanent Chief of Police. Hello and welcome to Around the Clock. I'm your host, Yolanda Greaves. On today's show, we'll be bringing you a Selectman's update for the meeting that happened on July 24th. We will also be having an interview with the new police chief for Ashland, Chief Vin Alfano. Of course, we'll have our Around the Town tour where we'll be stopping at the Community Center for the Valentine Forum. We'll be also going to the Public Library for an event that celebrated the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. And then we'll be sharing some baseball and a public service announcement. So stay with us as I bring you Around the Clock. War is a universal language. I know a renegade soldier when I see one. Never occurred to me that one might come from above. to announce the appointment of Chief Alfano as, a, of a, as our permanent Chief of Police. Hello, welcome back to Around the Clock. It's time for the Select Board update for the meeting that happened on Wednesday, July 24th. We were introduced to some of the newest members of our police department and our fire department. It was great to see other police officers and fire department personnel in the house uh, representing and supporting and congratulating our newest members. We also got introduced to our new police chief, Police uh, Chief Vin Alfano. He's been our interim police chief since March and he has now been appointed as our full-time police chief. So when you see him in the neighborhood or when you see him out and about, make sure you send him your congratulations. We had a hearing for three one-day liquor licenses, a new brewery called La, uh, Lost Shoe up in, Ma in Marlboro would like to come and pop up at our corner spot, so that was approved. They'll be there on Friday, August 16th, Saturday, August 17th, and Sunday, August 18th. So check it out. There'll also be some food trucks supporting them. We then had another, uh, another hearing for a change of a liquor license for Ashland Pizza. There's been a change of hands there. Ashland Pizza Palace is in the strip next to Cherry Blossom right on Route 135. We then went into the priority project updates that we as the select board and our town manager have. The first is the rail transit district. There's been discussion with a developer for lot two. We've shared some information bef uh, before on that. They were before the planning board with some of their information. They'll be going before the planning board again. At the select board retreat that happened a number of weeks ago, we talked about some of our priorities for that property. And now we are in discussion or at least reviewing those with UGC, who is the developer. They may come back and try to do a 40B. Uh, it would be a friendly 40B, but we will have to see what happens there moving forward. We then discussed our public safety building. There has been a change in the possible funding for that building. We had mentioned that there would be money coming from the bond bill. It is currently not in the capital plan at the state level, so we will be looking at other ways to fund the construction of that building. We are moving forward with the design and engineering and with the acquisition of not only the original four acres that were donated to the town and was accepted at town meeting, but some potential other uh, property attached to it that we're also working with Fafford on. From there, we talked about the downtown improvements. If you are interested in finding out the timing of the work that will be happening downtown, you can go to the town website, ashlandmass.com, find the notify me button and select which projects or which departments you'd like to get notification on. For the water main project, you'd want to find from the DPW department as to when those projects are happening, and then you'll get on an email and be notified. We'll also be posting some of that work on the town website as well as through social media. 
We then went into the town-wide strategic plan. There was no information there. Uh, just stepping back to the downtown improvements, it's going to take about two weeks for our DPW to do the installation of the temporary pipes downtown, and you've seen them some in place already. They then have to flush them, then they'll be using them, and then construction can start. We talked about the Warren District. So we talked first about the Milking Barn, which is the barn with the big red X if you're driving on Route 1, uh, if you're driving on Chestnut Street. So the barn has been condemned. We have gotten information back for um, designers and engineers to reconstruct that building. The idea is to demolish it and reconstruct to the same standards and to the same uh, plans. Uh, so we're working on that. And then, let's see, that's it for, oh, no, one other thing regarding the Warren District. There is what's called the Hall House, and after some discussion and looking at models from other communities that worked very well, we are going to put out an RFP for a public-private partnership to sell the property to a private entity, work with them on a restriction, so historic and conservation, so that they can redevelop it, but bring it back to its original glory, but then also have it be owned uh, to someone who can live there and then open to the, to the town on various days. We approved our consent agenda, which had a couple of resignations. We want to thank Craig Mathias for all his work on a cable advisory board, a cable advisory committee. He also spent time as a selectman here in town. And then Jeffrey Lingham has resigned from the Conservation Commission, and we'd like to thank him for his service to town. From there, we went into some old and new business. We had an update on the Eversource project. The Board of Selectmen has decided to go forward for a declaratory judgment on land court regarding the easement language of one pipe. That is moving forward. At the same time, our state senator, Karen Spilka, and our state rep, Jack Lewis, have submitted a letter to the siting board saying that they also oppose the project and asking that the siting board really look closely before they approve the permits for Eversource. We signed the purchase and sale agreement for the land known as Zero Tri Street. If you're not sure where that is, you can go ahead and Google that and see where it is. It's a large parcel. It's about nine and a half acres. And after looking at it, we thought that this could be a good parcel to add to our open space. So uh, we have signed the purchase and sale. It will come before town meeting at our special town meeting in the fall for town meeting approval. We discussed the status of the development liaison group. There was some misunderstanding and misuse, and we are admitting to that. There were two meetings that were held where there were two selectmen in two to select board members in attendance, and it had not, those meetings were not posted. At our next meeting in August, we will be discussing the status and how we're going to use that liaison group moving forward. We then vote, voted, as I mentioned, 433. 433 Chestnut Street, which is the Hall House, to move forward with looking to sell that um, and hope to get historical, um, historical Society has agreed to hold the CR, the conservation restriction and the de deed restriction on that property. We then talked a little bit about our mission and vision statement revision. That'll be happening at one of our meetings later in the year. Uh, as, so, as select board members, we can give our input and then we'll have a discussion later on. Uh, if you are interested, you can look at what our current vision and mission are, as well as the goals that are attached to it. And if you have any feedback, please feel free to send it to any of the members of the select board or to the select board as a whole. We then had a town manager report. There was a couple of items, as it says on, the, on our agenda, including but not limited to. So we talked about the town forest bridge projects that are being done by various Boy Scouts. There is going to be an event on August 3rd at the town forest starting at 10 a.m. A ribbon cutting, so the public is invited to attend and participate and see those bridges as well as the pro process and on the stone house that's being revised and rebuilt in the town forest. We talked about the Valentine property forum that happened on, Gen on the 22nd, and we'll go into more detail on that in our Around the Town tour, so catch that as well. We then discussed the MWRA connection. It's currently in committee. The MWRA is approving it. We have the funding for that, and Southboro is going to be working once we get the approval. The Mindez project, so the feasibility study that is going on, the designer has been 
uh, chosen. It's called Flansburg Associates. They've done a number of school building projects under time and under budget, which we here in Ashland really like. And so moving forward, those pr the process will be meet with them and then start the whole feasibility process. It still could be, it's still going to be probably about a two-year process before any decision is made on what should happen with the Mendez School Building and what the town is going to do. We then got an update on our home rule regarding the change of some of our tax dollars that we talked about at our town meeting, and that is also in review and approval for a committee. And that was our meeting. We actually ended fairly early on the 24th. It was about 9.30 when we wrapped up. Again, if you have any questions, you can go and watch the full meeting through our WACA YouTube channel, or certainly reach out to any of the members of the select board. Thanks for watching this update. We'll be meet with them and then start the whole feasibility process. It still could be, it's still gonna be probably about a two year process before any decision is made on what should happen with the Mendez School Building and what the town is going to do. We then got an update on our home rule regarding the change of some of our tax dollars that we talked about at our town meeting, and that is also in review and approval for a committee. And that was our meeting. We actually ended fairly early on the 24th. It was about 9.30 when we wrapped up. Again, if you have any questions, you can go and watch the full meeting through our WACA YouTube channel, or certainly reach out to any of the members of the select board. Thanks for watching this update. War is a universal language. I know a renegade soldier when I see one. Never occurred to me that one might come from above. Hello and welcome back to Around the Clock. We are here with the newly appointed Ashland Police Chief Vin Alfano. Vin, welcome to Around the Clock. Thank you very much. Vin, is that the name or is that short for something? It's short for Vincent, but I okay. usually go by Vin. Okay, it was something I was wondering about and other people have asked me. You are the newly appointed permanent police chief for Ashland. Yes. How are you feeling about that? I'm feeling wonderful. Um, I, the, the people that I've met in, uh, since March when I started as, as the interim chief, uh, the people I've met have just been outstanding. The people that I've worked with have been outstanding. Um, it's just been such an enjoyable experience. And when they asked me if I wouldn't mind staying on, it was a very short decision. It was, yes, I, <laughs> I, uh, I've grown very fond and very used to everybody and, and you know, very, very happy to work with everyone. So um, I really would have regretted leaving in another couple months and giving it all up. So I'm, I'm very happy to stay and continue assisting the town and the town government and whatever I can do to, you know, as far as the police department goes and the new public safety building. So give us a little bit of your history and how you landed here in Ashland. How did well, you start in police work? I started in police work actually in, in the, the private sector. I'll actually go back a little bit because okay. I, I was involved in public safety before even police work. Okay. Um, I grew up in Framingham. And uh, I went to a college up in Vermont. The college was called Norwich University. It's a okay. military college in Vermont. And it was in a rural area. So they had um, uh, an ambulance right at the school service and a fire department uh, to take care of both the campus and the surrounding towns. Mm -hmm. So I uh, developed quite an interest in, in the EMS, the ambulance end of things. And they ended up putting me in charge of it. So I had 25 EMTs that worked, uh, worked for me wow. up there. And we had two ambulances. And I just got very involved in public safety. Mm -hmm. And I, I did my final internship with the uh, Director of Civil Defense for the Vermont Department of Public Safety. Wow. So that sort of increased my interest even more. Uh, when I graduated, I came back to Framingham, where mm -hmm. I lived. And a, uh, a big computer company at the time, Prime Computer, was, was looking for security management staff. They were forming a corporate security staff. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was fortunate to, to, I was hired there. And I was there for 10 years managing their security oh, wow. and safety programs on the staff. 
And again, it was very, very interesting, but most of the uh, officers and most of the staff that worked for me were retired or former police officers. Okay. So I said, you know, here I am, this young guy, I need to get the experience that, that they have. Mm -hmm. So I took the civil service test. I was fortunate to uh, be appointed to the Framingham Police Department. Okay. And I uh, was with the Framingham Police Department for just shy of 20 years. I uh, started as wow. a, a patrol officer on the midnight shift and uh, went through the ranks. Uh, was a, a youth services officer, which were the predecessors of school resource officers. Okay. Um, a sergeant patrol supervisor, then mm -hmm. I was promoted to lieutenant, to shift commander, um, and ultimately I was the bureau commander for the Bureau of Administrative Services. Okay. But at the time, um, I recently uh, I purchased a house in Bolton because mm -hmm. I was married. And uh, when I was in Bolton, the chief's job came up there. Okay. So they offered me the chief's position in Bolton, so I was there for 10 years. and. Wow. Uh, then retired okay. and uh, went into teaching, law, strictly law enforcement mm -hmm. teaching. And uh, I received a call from Ashland, can you help us out with Chief Davis retiring? Right. So I ended up, I uh, was fortunate enough to become the interim chief here and mm -hmm. um, liked it an awful lot. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, well, and, and I feel like our community has really embraced you. Everyone I've spoken to like how you're out at our farmer's market and at events. And mm -hmm. so not only have you enjoyed being in the community, but the community has really embraced you. Well, it, it, you're right. It really works works two ways. I mean, as, as I said, I, I've met so many wonderful people in, in all aspects of the town. Mm -hmm. Town government, the, the select board, um, the town manager is extraordinary. You know, I really got an outstanding working relationship with, uh, with Mike. Um, in, the, in the department, the, the officers in the police department are really all little treasures. I mean, they all have mm -hmm. their particular talents and their particular areas where they really excel at. And, and, and my job is to, to bring all those talents out and, and make sure that they're, they're used in the community, and, and they are. And, and that's, that's been a real um, pleasant discovery for me is the, is the talent pool within the department. Great. Now, how many officers do we have right now? Uh, 20 or up to 27 now. Okay, and is that a full complement? Should we add a few no, more? No, the the FBI statistics uh, they have formulas per per um, community, and the formula is based on the population mm -hmm. and the, the call volume. Right. And according to the the FBI formula, we should have thirty patrol officers. Okay. We should be right at thirty, and that's patrol officers. Right. That's not counting su support staff support or staff. dispatchers. Yep. And, um, so we're a little bit shy of that, but mm -hmm. obviously the goal, the goal of the, the department and the town long term is to, to get up to that figure. And are we looking to add in this current, so we're now into fiscal year 20, we're mm -hmm. in July, are we looking to add any more officers this year or are we going to hold off and stay um, at the 27 from it, a budget perspective? Right, it would depend on the, on the budget outlook. Okay. I, mean, I, would, I would love to see an, uh, an officer, a new officer put into okay. the formula in upcoming years to get us closer to that. Okay. That thirty figure because okay. the work is there. It's it's um, a very busy community with all the businesses in town, right. and, and we we have a very low crime rate, mm -hmm. uh, which is a good thing. And that's a lot of that's because the officers are out there. They're very proactive. Mm -hmm. They're very visible. Um, you always see them. You can't drive through town without seeing, you know, several yeah. several police cruisers. And and the bad guys notice that too. Right. So that's something that that uh, is a benefit to all of us. Is the the maximum visibility of the police force directly affects the level and the amount of crime that you have in town. But a lot of the calls that we deal with aren't, aren't crimes. They're service right. calls. Um, we have a very active fire department. Yes. Um, and we work very, very closely. The fire department's outstanding. We work very, very closely with them. Um, and and the, the two state parks in town are, are large drivers of our call volume as and well. And we're hearing more and more. I mean, obviously, it's summer, so those state parks are a lot right. busier, which I think don't know that a lot of people understand that Hopkinton State Park is mostly in Ashland, it and then, of is. course, Ashland State Park is completely in Ashland. Mm -hmm. um, so what are the kinds of things you're dealing with at the state parks? Uh, well, naturally, and everybody in town can see it, traffic congestion and parking. Whenever, right. um, like I came in on the 4th of July uh, to work, and, and you could see that there's thousands of additional people right. coming into town. And they're beautiful parks, but um, the, the parking availability is very limited and the, the state resources and the state parking and what happens is you get a spillover onto our right. Ashland roadways. Right. And uh, our roadways are you know narrow and congested to start with and when you start adding that volume, um, it creates safety issues and mm -hmm. safety concerns. So uh, parking has, has been an issue for both, both state right. parks. Um, call volume increases because 
uh, you know, the parks, they open, I think, at 8 or, or around that time in the morning. And usually on a busy day, by 9, 9.30, they're closed. Right, cause because they're Because they're at maximum capacity. Yeah. So with that amount of people, you, you get a lot of service calls for the fire department, the ambulance in mm -hmm. particular, um, where you have a lot of people in close proximity, especially in hot weather. We've had, you know, a lot of disturbances, fights at the, oh, at wow. the, at the state parks. So... Um, it is state property, but um, we we really have to manage the police right. services for it, which is, it's it's a strain. It's taxing. Yeah. yeah. So you're now the police, the permanent police chief, which, mm -hmm. by the way, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, have you thought about what are some of the first initiatives that you feel you need to be working on for our department? The first initiative that, that I worked on, and, and I feel I've seen the tangible results, I want to improve the morale of the department, okay. um, really you know, recognize the, the resources that the officers are to the town, and really kind of plug them into areas where they can best use their talents. Okay. Um, right now, uh, we're really um, heavily stressing traffic enforcement. Um, I'm a big advocate of traffic enforcement, number one, from a safety aspect. If you can, if you can slow people down or you can mm -hmm. enforce stop signs, and it, it, it reduces accidents. And right. Nobody wants accidents or the associated um, injuries. And traffic enforcement in, in law enforcement is sort of the gateway into, into all crimes. Mm -hmm. For example, if an officer stops a car that's speeding, that person um, may have no license. That person could have a suspended license. That person could have a warrant on them. That person could be driving under the influence of alcohol, driving under the influence of drugs. Right. So uh, by the officer making that initial stop of the car for speeding, they open up all those other areas which the police would be interested in as far as right. criminal activity or dangerous activity. So uh, that's a concern. Another thing is, uh, as I told you before, the, the, the bad guys and bad girls out there, they know when right. they go into a town what the level of police activity is. Mm -hmm. And they will tell you there are certain towns that they will not go to to break into houses mm -hmm. because they know that there's a strong traffic enforcement program mm, in that town. Interesting. Um, and I experienced that that in Bolton. We, we had extremely few break-ins in Bolton where the surrounding towns had more right. because the officers had an extremely um, visible traffic enforcement program. So it really does work. And I've heard that obviously from the officers, but I've also mm -hmm. heard that from the people that commit the crimes. And when they tell you something, that usually yeah. means means a lot. So traffic enforcement is a, a big initiative. Um, visibility in the community, we just reactivated, um, through the efforts of Lieutenant Dave Bowden, we reactivated our uh, police mountain bike program. Good. Um, we were, with the auxiliary police, were able to uh, obtain a grant to purchase two nice uh, police-rated mountain nice. bikes. Nice. And then the department, our department purchased another two. So um, Lieutenant Bowden put uh, all the equipment together and uh, we have 10 officers that are interested in riding those patrol bikes. Wow. So probably within another week, you're gonna see those bikes out there in uh, usually in teams. Okay. And they're going to um, be in areas like the town forest, uh, pond, uh, the different pond areas in town, mm -hmm. the different uh, trails through town. Um, you'll, you'll see them over at Stone Park. Okay. Um, around the ball games, all the all the places, especially on weekends and late afternoons mm -hmm. in the good weather, where we have events, special events. Yeah. Farmers market is perfect. Example. Farmers market, corner yep. spot. Yep. There's they, a lot going on outside here in the summer. There in certainly Ashland. is, and and officers on a bike are number one. They're very approachable. Yes. And they they're good for the environment because there's no gas. I don't right. have to spend budget money on gas. Uh, it's good for the officers. Cause Keeps them fit. Good exercise, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, it's it's a very quiet mode of travel so there's mm -hmm. no disruption and also it's very easy to find if there is some criminal activity the the bikes can drive up on it and right. they're very quiet so right. they really don't know they're there but the biggest thing is the uh, is the visibility of the police in the community okay. and and children children love police bikes police motorcycles and police canines those are three things that, that children love <laughs> and you know we're fortunate we have all, I was going to say we are fortunate those. to have all three of those we here in our community we have all three and um, they're, they're, you know we're going to get them out there and have them be used much more than they were and much Great. much more visible and it's Great. good morale for the officers too because they love to do those types of things and as you said we have we do have a great police staff and and the more we can get them out and into the community and get the community knowing right. them and who they are is a positive for everybody. Mm -hmm. We have a, uh, a very strong presence and program in the schools right now yes. with our two school resource officers. 
And again, that's another area, having, having done that for mm-hmm. a, a large part of my career, uh, you know, being in the schools, I, I really have a, 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 a fondness in my heart for the school programs. And right. uh, school safety is, is a number one priority for me. So you'll, you'll probably see a lot more interaction between the school department and myself um, and the school department and the police department in, in joining together to really uh, make our schools as safe as possible within the financial resources that we have. Great. Great. So I'm going to bring you back in a couple months and see how Mm -hmm. things are going. But before I let you go today, there's one question I ask all new guests to around the clock. It's not hard. (laughs) I'm sure you can handle it. Is there one thing about you, Chief Vin Alfano, that not many people may know that you'd be willing to share with our viewers? Hmm. Uh, I build drums for my hobby. I like to you build, build drums. And, and restore antique drums and drum sets and build new ones. So that's my hobby. That's sort of my relaxation. And do so. you play as well? I do. Probably not as well as I should, but <laughs> I do. Since, since high school. So. Wow. We'll have to have you bring some on next time. Yeah, they're fun. They're, it's very therapeutic to, to make them. And, but most of them I end up donating to charitable organizations. Oh, so. nice. That's a story right there. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, Chief... First of all, thank you for coming to Around the Clock. Congratulations on your appointment. And we look forward to working with you from an Around the Clock and WACA perspective, but as well as a member of the select board. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Great. And that wraps it up with our new chief, Chief Vin Alfano. And we'll be back with more Around the Clock. War is a universal language. I know a renegade soldier when I see one. Never occurred to me that one might come from above. It's now time for the Around the Clock, Around the Town tour. We're going to be starting at the Ashland Public Library, where there was an event in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. Len Rabinovitz, who was a previous teacher here in Ashland, who loves sharing things about space and stars. If you haven't seen his posts on Facebook, check them out. He gave a presentation on the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, and it was in conjunction with the Ashland Summer Reading Program. The Friends of the Ashland Public Library sponsor a summer reading program where you can track your minutes, and they tied in the moon landing and the anniversary of it. Let's take a look at some of the information Len shared. Uh, but the far side, okay, is much more pockmarked and much less flat, okay? Um, all the landings took place on the side that we see, all right? It was easier, uh, it was safer, okay? Uh, they did discuss, there was some consideration of doing a far side landing, uh, but it would have been too... Uh, it would have been too complicated because they, you're out of touch. When you're over this, you're out of touch with everything, literally everything. Again, thank you to Len for sharing that information. And if you weren't one of the 20 or 30 people who saw the presentation live, you can go to the WACA YouTube channel and watch the whole thing there. It was about a two-hour presentation with information about leading up to the whole, cha- the whole moon race and um, how, how we as the United States got there. From the Ashland Public Library, we are going to head over to the community center. On Monday night, July 22nd, there was a public forum on the Valentine Estate. The Valentine Estate is on Route 135. As you head out of town, you pass the middle school and then the mobile station, and then around a corner is the big yellow house and the barn. The town bought that property about a year ago, and we are now in the process. It has been shored up from weather. There were some issues in regards to the chimney and the barn roof. That has all been taken care of. There also has been some clearing of some property uh, to make it a little bit more level and also to take out some of the invasive species. 
Now the process is what are we going to do with this property now that we own it? And then some citizens that were there gave their input. It is now before the select board. We are going to put out an RFP for possible public-private partnerships, and we're going to pull the committee together to move forward and decide what to do with this property. Uh, if you'd like to see the full presentation that was done, you, again, you can go to WACA TV YouTube channel and watch the whole presentation, or you can go to the Around the Clock Facebook page where it was also presented live. And then you can give your feedback to Dave Foster and those of us on the select board for what you'd like to see or if there are ideas that you thought we should pursue. From the Valentine Forum, we are going to head to actually a little public service announcement. The troop, Girl Scout Troop 85172, they are upcoming freshmen and they are working on their silver award. There's the bronze, silver, and gold award that Girl Scouts can work on as they go through the ranks as Girl Scouts. The young women of Troop 85172 have been supporting and volunteering at the food pantry and they created a public service announcement and we'll take a little bit, uh, we'll look a, a little bit at it uh, in support of making sure people still donate to the food pantry during the summer. Let's look at a little bit of it. I'm so excited to go on vacation. I know, the cave is going to be so fun. I've got the sunscreen. I have the suitcases. Here are the towels. Oh, don't forget the beach chairs. OK, I think we have everything packed. But wait, we have all this food, and no one's here to eat it. Yeah, I don't think I want to eat hot soup in 90 degree weather. And we have so much pasta, but nobody's here to eat it. We're not going to eat all this when we're on vacation. I know, we can donate it to the Ashland Food Pantry. That's such a good idea. We passed the food pantry on our way to the highway. Let's drop our food off then. Yeah, let's leave now. There's a sign for the food pantry. Yeah, I think it's that way. Come on, let's go. Most people don't think to donate before they go on vacation, but in the summer, the need is greater. Anyone who relies on school breakfast or lunch doesn't have that option during summer vacation. In addition to food, the food pantry also takes donation of clothing, books, sports equipment, and toys. Remember, give before you go! Thank you ladies for producing that and making people aware of the need to still support the food pantry during the summer, not just during the holidays when most people think there is need. We have one more stop on our Around the Town tour. This is some sports. This is regarding the Ashland Legion Post 77 Legion baseball team. Many of the members of this team were seniors at Ashland High School last year. Uh, in the spring and as a team as the Ashland High School team they went all the way to the championships and lost just at the championships now the seniors of that team are sort of having this bittersweet way of creating some um, more uh, memories and good memories as the Ashland Legion baseball post 77 has become the zone 5 champions they beat Lowell earlier this month with a, t a score of 6-2, to two, and they are moving forward in those championships. So congratulations to those seniors. Glad you can continue the glory of your high school years, and thank you for being part of baseball here in Ashland. And that wraps up our Around the Town tour. A couple things to let you know about. Captain Marvel will be shown on August 23rd at the Corner Spot. And that is sponsored by WACA-TV. And hopefully we'll see you there. Maybe we'll see you at some other events around the town. If you ever have an event that you'd like to share with us here at WACA-TV and Around the Clock, either reach out via our Around the Clock Facebook page or to WACA directly. Thanks for watching our Around the Town tour. War is a universal language. I know a renegade soldier when I see one. Never occurred to me that one might come from above.
Thanks for watching this episode of Around the Clock. I want to thank my producer, Paul Bowden, as well as some technical and filming assistance that was done by Miles Garnett, Allison Rose, Connor Donovan, and Hopkinton Cable for some of the shared footage. I'm your host, Jolanda Greaves. Thanks for watching Around the Clock.